And then the elimination round was on Wednesday. Hmm. So you did, since I watched the show, you did very well on the show actually because all yeah. five judges chose you to be on their team. So I also like the, the, like the judges because I, when I watched their interviews, since they're in the real estate industry, I felt that I could really learn a lot from these judges since they're already like big guys in the real estate industry like Victor Kansunji, Carrie Lagdameo, Cesar Wee, Jet Yu. There are four judges. Uh, there's right? the fifth one. Uh, George, George Royaka and Angie. Ah, yes. Yes, George Royaka of Ancas. Yeah, so there were five judges and all five chose Rookie, represented by Elroy. It's photos of his reaction because it was so funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, Elroy kept on having to come back to, to the front because <laughs> when John Aguilar would call on the top picks of, for example, Carrie Lugton, may you are. And then Rookie again. And then the next judge would be... And, and Elroy's face would be like... Rookie. Rookie again. And Elroy would be like... <laughs> shocked. Shocked face. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that was natural. Because we didn't know if we were going to get called or what. I was behind the scenes. I was watching from the side. Oh, you were there, Jay. Yeah, I was. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Were you the only team to get picked by all five judges? Or there was another one? I think you were the only team. Yeah, we were. We were the only team. You were the only that team. That got picked by all five. But I think there was this one other guy who got picked by four or something. Yeah, but you were the only team who got picked. So how, mm -hmm. how was your experience joining Final Pitch? Like, were you able to get advice, mentorship from, from the judges? Like, especially until now, what, what happened after you won or you got yeah, the so it, it was a really chosen. interesting experience. It was a really interesting experience. It was something new for us. Uh, pitching isn't new for us, but having that whole experience of a reality TV show and going through those business challenges. So Elroy did most of that. And I was the one who, who went to, to Davao for Sir Carrie's challenge. It was fun. It was interesting. And you also get to have you also get to know the individual investors as as you are doing the challenges with them so but of course because it's a shoot so there's a lot of like shooting <laughs> happening so you only probably get to be able to talk with them um, during lunch or during dinner and it's good to continue that communication with them. So right now, even after the show, we, we continue to communicate with them. And you so get do you have like a mentoring, me mentoring <laughs> schedule with yes, like all five? We don't have a formal mentoring session with, with all five. I mean, there's no like, the show doesn't say that, oh, you get to have like a formal mentoring. Mm -hmm. Pero if you're able to develop that relationship with them, and if you probably ask for their time, then it'd be a lot easier than if, I mean, it's not easy to have that relationship with, with those yes. top developers. And for you to be on that show, to be recognized by them, to have that initial relationship with them, I think it's already very, very valuable. Yes, I agree. Like even more than their investment, it's more of the, the relationship that you get to have with them because you get to have them informally as your mentors. Yeah. Like if you and reach out to them, they will respond, like they will respond to you. Yeah. It was also pretty lucky that before we joined the show, one of the judges was already our client. So that would be Sir Cesar of Wecom. So we yes, he was, was a big fan of you on the show. Client of rookies. <laughs> And when we joined the final pitch, they recognized us and they were like, hey, you guys are here. And we're like, yeah, we're here. <laughs> yeah, I saw his reaction. He was a very big fan of you guys on the show. <laughs> because when the other judges were asking him about... He's Rookie, a really he, nice guy. Yeah, he seems very nice. When the other judges were asking mm. him about Brookie and he said like he, he uses Brookie for all of his projects. And if... Brookie were to disappear, like, would he have a hard time? And he said, yes, because he's already, like, Brookie's already part of 
how he does things with his projects. Yeah, I, I, I really, really also appreciate the WeCom team. I love their company culture, uh, their project directors. They're also very friendly. And Sir Carson, of course, I love Sir Carson as well. I think in general, the WeCom team, they're, they're great. They're, they're great. They're a great team. Okay. I'm actually also a user of Brookie for A Brown because Brookie is also, uh, A Brown is also a client of Brookie. And since I'm an accredited broker of A Brown, I use their app. And personally, I find it a lot easier to really sell and help my clients acquire A Brown properties because I can have access to the information that I need, like the map, the, the computation, everything that I need, all 24-7. Uh, so even if I'm contacting my client at like 1 a.m., because sometimes if the client is an OFW, they live abroad, then they usually coordinate with me. I usually have to coordinate with, with them in like 12 midnight or early in the morning because that's when they are available. So at least with Rookie, since it's powered by AI. I don't have to wait for the marketing staff of that particular developer to, to be awake to reply to my, to my Facebook message. So it's very helpful for us at bro as brokers. So for Cagayan de Oro uh, brokers or agents who are not yet using the Brookie app, you should really try it. It's very, very helpful because of the information that's always available. Yeah, I'm really happy to hear you say that, to have an idea become a reality and now people are using it. It always makes me feel like, wow, that people are using this. And we also got like feedback from the sales managers of one of our clients as well. And he was telling me that before, it would take some time for him to get the computations. And now, because they can get it right away, they're able to close the client right there. So they, they were very happy with it. and. It's so nice to hear that kind of feedback that Brookie is really making an impact in the lives of the developers and also their sales team. So it's really good. So hopefully we can yes, have for, more clients for sure. on board for Brookie. Yes, hopefully so Brookie so can have more clients here in Cagayan. Yeah, yeah. We have, we have one coming soon. Coming soon. Very, very soon, hopefully. We just started so first their Batangas project. So we're just mm -hmm. launching their Batangas one first. And then we're going to proceed to the CDO one. Okay, so I'm excited. Hopefully also more other developers in Cagayan de Oro would really get Brookie because it's very efficient. It's an efficient way of giving out the information that the sales team needs. Mm. Yeah, to the brokers who are watching also, if you can recommend to us any developer that maybe you're, you're close with and you want to refer them to us, please feel free to reach out to me and then we can talk about how your favorite developer can also have Brookie. So yeah, because I really want to see more developers coming in, being part of the platform and everyone being able to benefit from that. Okay. So what was your biggest challenge in launching Brookie? Biggest challenge, biggest challenge. Maraming challenges. <laughs> Although I can't think of anything that's particularly big, but there are definitely a lot of challenges along the way. There's a lot of challenges in... Hmm, like before... We started out, we didn't really have a mobile app. So we started first with being a chatbot in integrated in Facebook Messenger. And we had a bit of trouble later on. Oh, I, I remember that <laughs> Facebook would like Facebook. block, <laughs> block Brookie. <laughs> so that's how we started because that was our MVP. And we eventually were able to move to really having our own mobile app, which is a lot better now because we're in control of the platform. So that was one challenge. And I think over time, I've come to roll with the challenges, <laughs> not get too stressed out. <laughs> yeah, if you're, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, it's like you, you kind of get used to having problems. <laughs> problems. <laughs> problems or challenges. You just get used to it. And whenever there's a new problem or a new challenge that comes along, you just find a way to solve it and not really stress about it. 
Like I, yes. I'm like that now. Like before, <laughs> when I started being a real estate broker, I used to. I I don't really get stressed like easily, but there are times when I would get stressed. Whenever if my client gets stressed, I would also get stressed. But now, if my client is stressed, I'm like, okay, I'll just chill. <laughs> I'll just chill and just find a solution. Because if you get stressed, there. It won't help the situation. If you get stressed, you'll get wrinkles. Yes, and you get wrinkles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just be proactive. So how is Brookie doing right now? Like in the midst of the pandemic, like is it doing okay? Are you struggling? Or like is it just doing like plateau lang? So how is we're Brookie actually, doing? We're actually doing okay. We're actually doing okay. We, I find it to be a blessing that we're able to continue this business despite of the pandemic because I know that there are a lot of businesses that have been affected. There's a lot of people who may have lost their work or lost their businesses, but yet we continue to have this business that's resilient towards the pandemic. And in fact, it's even, it's even become more relevant because of yes. the pandemic because now we're seeing the processes have changed. So back then, yes. I think we were pretty much aware that the real estate industry is a bit of a laggard when it comes to adapting to tech. That's but true. now, because they have to, they have to, so they're more open to hearing us out. Even, even the government has really been able to adapt. So mm-hmm. I was watching this interview the other night by Marvin Germo, mm-hmm. and his, his guest said that the, the guy that he was interviewing on, on his vlog said that this pandemic has really fast forwarded the Philippines like 10, 5 to 10 years into the future. It wouldn't have okay. happened if this, if the pandemic did not happen. Because you were all forced to adapt. Yeah. So it, it actually became an advantage for Berkey in a way. Okay. So what is your advice to entrepreneurs out there who also dream of making it in the tech industry? In the tech industry, hmm, hmm, yeah. I and what is that, the what is the difference? Also, like you've been able to start a traditional business, you've been able to start a startup, and you've been able to start like how do you how would you classify truly wealthy? Not traditional, but yeah, it's, not it's also not a traditional business. A sales, <laughs> sales, yeah, uh, sales. A, a business that is focused on sales. So what, what is the difference like for all three? And what did you find most challenging out of the three? Like for those who don't know, Steph is also an owner, used to be an owner, an owner of uh, a cafe, a coffee shop. So that's classified as a traditional business. And then Brookie is a startup. So what is the difference between the two in terms of, I don't know, workload and... For me, I think Challenges. the most one is the traditional business. <laughs> I feel the <Yeah>. same way. <laughs> the traditional <laughs> one is actually the most challenging. <laughs> that really depends. Uh, I think that depends. Uh, because in terms of the nature of the business, because we started we started it, the cafe, Alex and I, we're co-founders of, of that cafe. And for me particular, in particular, I don't think it was my strength. So I think that was why it's also more challenging for me compared to Truly Wealthy and compared to Brookie. So a startup in general, I think, is also very challenging because you are creating your product from the ground up compared to a traditional business where you already have the product and all you need to do is probably market it, sell it, or build your infrastructure that supports how you would sell that product. So between the two, I think a startup would inherently be more difficult to do compared to a traditional business. But in my experience, I found the traditional one more challenging just because it wasn't my lane. So when I started the startup, it was in my lane in a way because I had domain expertise. I'm in the real estate industry. but the challenge with creating a startup is you have to build your product. You have to find a market that needs it, that would pay for it, that would actually find value in it. And then you have to 
be able to build your processes around it. So I really think Th- that there's a lot of work that goes into starting a, a business, whether it's a traditional business or a startup. Yeah, yeah. But for me, I think I think a startup would be more challenging in a way, just because you have to build your product from the ground up. Yes, and you have to find a way to pay for the developers mm. and the other overhead and, expenses. Yeah, and I think for me, I would rather choose the startup because it also depends on your vision as to how far you see your startup going. For a traditional business, more or less, I think that vision is sort of carved out for you in a way because you can already see how others are doing it compared to your startup where it's probably a unique idea and not a lot of people are doing it. So you're the one who really sees the future of how it could be. So you are my future. <laughs> oh, that's so right. what is your advice to entrepreneurs out there who are thinking of maybe launching a startup or a traditional business? Well, I think in general, it's, it's for you guys to just keep on going with if you have that desire in you to create a business, if you have that desire in you to start something, go ahead and do it. Don't think too much about it. Don't overanalyze that you become stuck or that you can't move. Just take that first step, even though it's a small step. So even if you feel like, uh, maybe nothing will really come out of this since it's just a small step. I think consistency, consistency is very important. So for, for anyone, actually, just be consistent in the things that you're doing on a daily basis to achieve the bigger goal that you want to get to. And always keep learning. Keep learning from other people. Okay. So last question. What are the top three characteristics that you think every entrepreneur should have? Mm, I think there's a lot of characteristics, but maybe just a couple of characteristics that come to mind right now would be resilience. One is resilience because failure is inevitable when you're starting a business. You will fail time and time again, and it, sometimes it will knock you down a little bit. Sometimes it will, sometimes it will knock you down real hard. So you just got to get up. You got to... You got to go past the whole thought of failing because I think society has made us think that failing is a bad thing. So we have to change our mindset when it comes to failing. We have to consider failing to be just, you know, that next step towards success. So that, that's one, resilience. Um, second one is to have always an attitude of learning, to never be too proud. Never be too proud. Humility. Yeah. (laughs) Humility also. That you feel like you know everything or you don't want to learn from other people anymore. Always keep learning. That's very important. And number three, for me, is to really have a strong faith in the Lord. Without the Lord, I don't know where I would be. Okay, so so that's that's your your top three. Resilience, Mm -hmm. humility, and faith. Okay, thank you so much, Steph. I really learned a lot from you today with all of the experiences that you've had with Brookie, with the Foundry, Truly Wealthy Realty. So that's everything combined. I believe that all these experiences has really made you into a better person, a better entrepreneur, made you more resilient, more humble, and more faithful. Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, so, thank, much, you so thank you. Thank you for being on the show today. And okay. I'm sure a lot of people will be able to learn a lot from this interview. Yeah, and uh, guys, please do follow our page, Brookie Technologies. We are on Facebook, especially if you're in the real estate industry. And we continue to have some things that we are cooking up for the real estate industry. So just keep posted. Just keep just follow so for interested inter- developers who are interested in Brookie, how can they reach you? Uh, they can reach us through our email, ask at brookie.io. So maybe 
you can <laughs> put that up there. Okay. Ask at Berkey.io. And I can also give you my number so they can call me. My number is like kind of open. It's like all over the internet. So no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, thank you again so much, Steph. Thank you. Bye.